All right. So as soon as I get this light on here, I'll be ready to start. Facebook is not being very friendly to me this morning. Okay, turn the lights on. Ta-da! All right. Just when I think I have everything figured out, right? All right, so hey everybody, it's Joanne from Joanne's Bath and Body. I have no idea where this video is posting right now, uh, whether it's posting on my personal page or the business page because I can't find the go live page. Sir Barks a lot in the background is saying hello, that would be Marlo. Um, I'm just gonna take one more second to go grab my apron, which I put on the wrong side of my workspace. <clears throat> so let me move you out of the way for a moment. Okay. I'll grab my stick blender. That will also be helpful. Okay, and my apron. All right. Wow, here and here I thought I was so organized to have everything all together. Okay, so yesterday... A friend and I went to my favorite beach in the whole world, which is um, at Sunset State Park here in California. And um, I had an inspiration while I was there to, um, for today's soap. So I totally changed up what it was that I was going to do today. All right. Um, I have a towel here off to the side, which I'm going to go grab. And the reason for the towel is because um, the, my gloves, which I ordered the other day, are not in yet. So I have no gloves for my hands. Just means I'm going to have to be extra careful. Okay, so this is going to be um, a piped soap. So it'll be a high top soap. And I have some uh, special uh, additives for the top and for the inside. So since this is going to be a piped soap, I'm going to start out by just making my um, frosting here in this bowl. Okay, so I have in there all of my oils and I'm just gonna add my additives. Okay, so that's kale and clay and um, some colloidal oatmeal. And then just a teeny tiny little bit of coconut milk. Oh, Marlo, can you hear him? Bark, bark. So that's why I call him Sir Barks a lot. He's popping in to say hello. All right, so let's get the stick blender all caught up, all fixed up here, and we'll get started on the frosting. So in my lye solution, oh, rats. And out goes the light. There we go. In my lye solution, I already have... Um, the titanium dioxide that I need to uh, make this batter white for the frosting. So if you can see that in there. And I'm going to tilt the camera down now because you'd rather see the soap than me. All right. Okay, so let's tilt it up just a touch. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna give this just a quick zhuzh before I add the lye solution, just to mix in the kale and clay and the colloidal oatmeal so that there's, it's all nice and smooth. Now this is just a half pound batch. And it is strictly for the frosting that's going on the top. And as you can guess, it's going to be a white frosting. I want it to be nice and bright white. Okay, set that off to the side. Give it a stir. So I don't have a special recipe for the frost, the soap frosting. It's just the same recipe as the base. Okay. Mix this up really well. to be at least a medium trace when I set it aside. And I'm 
not adding any fragrance to this. Mm, not bad. do want this to thicken up because hopefully it'll be thick enough by the time we get to um, the end of the uh, soap loaf making this will be firm enough to just pipe on the top okay so my inspiration for today like I said came from my trip to the beach yesterday I'm just setting that aside um, and now we'll work on the, the base um, and I found all these really sweet little little shells about that big and now this has already been um i don't know if the camera is picking it up but it has um just a little spritz of gold glitter on it and i thought i haven't made a beach theme soap in a while so i'm putting real seashells on it from the pacific ocean all right let me give this main batch here a zhuzh these are all my hard oils here or sorry, soft oils. Okay, with the clay and the colloidal oatmeal. And to this, I'm going to add first of all, I need some spatulas. So to this, I'm going to add all my soft oils, which have already been pre-melted. Okay, oh. all in here, just scrape it up really well. And I am going to reuse this container, so it's okay if I leave some oil in there, but I want them almost all of it in here. Okay, I'll give that a stir. Like I said, I don't know where um, Facebook put the go live button. I don't, and I don't know if I'm live on my personal page or live on the Bath and Body page. Hopefully I'm live on the Bath and Body page. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add my coconut milk. This is coconut cream and I had it in the refrigerator so it's pretty solid. I'm just going to add this before I add the lye water so that I can make sure that there's no extra clumps of, co of cream that don't get thoroughly mixed in. All right. Okay, before I even add the lye water. Come on. Go in your slot. Thank you. Okay, I think all of the coconut cream has been blended in. It's just because it doesn't have any additives, um, it, it does separate when it gets cold. So I end up with coconut water on the bottom and coconut cream on the top, and it's the cream that I'm interested in. All right, so there's that. The fragrance that I'm using today, um, I love the way, love the title of this. It's from um, Micah's and More, and it's called Honey, I Wash the Kids. <laughs> okay, so what's special about today's lye water solution is that half of the water that's in here, um, it came actually directly from the Pacific Ocean. Uh-huh, I dipped a clean bottle into the ocean and got out some, some ocean water, and then when I got home, I ran it through a coffee filter um, to make sure that there's no debris in here. So this is made with water from the Pacific Ocean, 
And then regular, um, just uh, filtered water as well. Okay, and we have our sea salt in there, like I always add. All right, let's give this just a stir. So that's part of the beach theme. Um, and I am calling this one Beach Days. It'll all make sense in just a moment. And I do want this to be very, very, very fluid. So let's mix it on low. No, I can't. Mix it in on low. Looks like it's going to take a while. Okay, but I want it just to the point where there's no more oil floating on the top and it's all been emulsified. I want it to be barely, barely at trace. This looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I have pre-mixed my colors. See how the frosting is doing. Oh, that's setting up nice. It's already thick. Okay, so I've pre-mixed my colors and we're gonna be using the Essential Depot mold today. Now, the reason I wanna use this is because I am gonna be piping on the top, but I find that for me, the way that I've been doing it, if I use my regular purple mold, let's pretend this is my regular purple mold, and the soap comes all the way up to the top, then when I add the frosting, it like it flops over the edge and I go too far. So I've seen other soap makers videos where they use like a five pound mold, uh, but they only put like three and a half pounds worth of soap in there and then the frosting on top and it, it doesn't get flop over the sides. So that's what I'm gonna try today with this. Okay, so the first colors that I have set up here, I want it to be just a small layer on the bottom. So here, let's reuse this container. And it's going to be the sand layer. So I think I want it to be about Yeah, about that much. All right, I'm just gonna set that over here. So the sand layer, and I have, like I said, pre-mixed the colors. The colors, I'm, um, I'm using just a touch of Cappuccino Mica from Brambleberry, um, and that's a gorgeous, rich brown color, but I only want just a little bit of that, and um, because I want this to be tan, not brown, brown, right? And then I also added some Golden Brilliance glitter to this. Now, when you go to the beach in California, I'm not quite sure what it's like elsewhere, but um, when, you're actually, when you actually look at all the little grains of sand, they sparkle. And it sparkles so pretty. So that's why I added the Golden Brilliance in there. Now, for the fragrance oil, I'm just going to add just a touch to here. Now, I've never used this fragrance oil before, so I'm not quite sure how it behaves. Okay, so we add just a little bit to that. I don't know if it accelerates, decelerates. I, I have no idea. All right, can you hear Quincy in the background barking? Goodness, they must have known. Okay, so yeah. Let's, oh no, I use that for fragrance. So let's use this one. Okay, but I do, I use the brown just because I just wanted it to be just slightly tan colored. I think, I think actually that'll be it right there. Oh, it's almost their lunchtime. Can you hear them hollering for lunch? Maybe just a little touch more. Um, okay, yeah, I like that. That's good. Okay. Either he's either hollering for his lunch or he's hollering because we've uh, 
confined him to the bedroom while I'm making soap. Okay, oh, and there's Marlo. Listen to those boys. Uh, uh, uh. All right, I'm just gonna give this a quick stick blend. I do want this to be just a tiny little bit thick because it is gonna be, oh, I forgot something. Phew. So I, I brought home um, a small container of sand. But then I wondered, how am I gonna clean this? Um, because, you know, I, I don't wanna put dirty sand in there and um, it, it just, I couldn't figure out a way to clean it. So um, instead of using the sand that I brought home for texturing this soap, I'm gonna use some lemon peel. Um, lemon peel powder is very fine but it's an awesome exfoliant. Okay, so I'm just gonna add just a touch of lemon peel powder. Yeah, I thought that would be much cleaner than using sand from the beach. Although I love the idea of using the sand from the beach. All right, so now that I've added that, let's give this a blend. We'll get that all mixed in. Just a touch more of my colorant here. <laughs> kind of turned an orange color. I wasn't expecting that. I wanted tan. That's all right. I think this will do the trick. Okay. Get that another quick little buzz. <laughs> into here and I've got a little bit of soap on my hands. Let's wipe that off right away. Wish my gloves would have came in, but they didn't. Okay, so we'll bring the mold over and we're just gonna pour this bottom layer. That's all it's gonna be is just the bottom layer. Just go straight into here. And I'm not saving anything for the top because we are going to be piping the top. Okay, so there's our first layer, our bottom layer, and it has the lemon peel powder in it for texture, as well as, you know, to make us the speckly appearance. Okay, and I'm just gonna bang this down a little. Give it a shimmy shimmy shake. Okay, oh, and I forgot my chopstick to clean off the side, so I could grab that. go. Okay, I'm just going to clean down the sides and make it all nice and even just by running the chopstick along the edge. And there we go. Okay, so we have the bottom layer in just like that. Okay, we're going to set that off to the side. work on the blues. Now I have three different colors of blue here. I have a light blue, um, an aqua blue, and then a bit of a darker blue. I'll show those to you as I mix them. Now the darker blue I'm just going to mix directly into this container because I just want it as a slight accent. Okay, and this darker blue, I, mean, I pre-mix all uh, my micas with almond oil. So this darker blue is Caribbean Blue Mica from Brambleberry. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is just put, so 
some batter in there and I'm not going to, oops, I don't have gloves on, don't do that. And I'm not going to add any fragrance because there's just not enough, not enough in there. Okay, so we'll get this mixed in. My little mini mixer here. Clean that off and get the drips off my hands. Okay, <clears throat> so I am gonna use my chopstick just to give this like a manual stir. Okay, make sure that all the batter is mixed in all and incorporated with the mica. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, awesome. So this is actually just gonna be a small accent color in this swirl. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this off to the side for a moment. Okay, and give that a stir. I'm gonna do the same thing with this aqua color because I want the majority of this to be a lighter blue. So this is Mermaid Blue Mica from Brambleberry. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the mini mixer. Just go in and swirl that mix with the mini mixer. Make sure it's all incorporated. And again, no, um, I'm not adding any fragrance to this because it's just not, just not going to be um, enough. It's so small. Okay. And now I'm gonna give that a quick mix off, clean off, and grab my skewer here and just make sure that it's all mixed in. <clears throat> okay. All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side. Okay, wipe my hands. Clean off the table countertop. All right, so I do have a third blue, but I don't wanna mix that just yet. And I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want a bit more of the white. Oh, let's add that much. Okay, and then I'm gonna mix the rest of this into this other container here. Okay, and since that's going to be mixing the white, I'm just gonna put that in there. And we'll pour out the rest of the batter into this container. And this will be our light blue color. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this off to the side. We'll mix up our white next. So the white that I mixed up is a combination of uh, titanium dioxide and um, 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 fairy dust. So the titanium dioxide I get from Brambleberry and this fairy dust I got from bescented.com. It's very sparkly. So I mix those two together so that I can have a sparkly white color in here. Now titanium dioxide is a little finicky. It stays a little clumpy unless you mix it very well. So I tried to do that with my little mini mixer here, but it's gonna need some major mixing in the container, in the bowl. Okay, so we're going to add that, and as you can see, it's rather thick. I didn't want to overdo it with the 
with the uh, almond oil. Okay, I'm gonna set that off to the side. You can see that lightened up a little bit already, but once I start with the stick blender, once I turn it on, it's gonna lighten up even more. So I am going to add some fragrance oil to this one, and then I'm gonna add all the rest of it in there, maybe a touch more in here. Okay. Give this a stir and let me give this a stir just to loosen it up a little. We still have to add our color to this, I know. Okay, but that fragrance oil seems to be behaving very well in the brown layer, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's give this a quick zhuzh. All right, see, and as you can see, it did get lighter. All right, so now I'm going to take this off and ploop it in here. Okay, while I get the light blue. So this is Powder Blue Mica from Mica's Amore. You've seen me use this um, before. Okay, and let's just add that directly into here. It's a beautiful baby blue color. I'm gonna put all of it right in here. There we go. Alrighty. So we have our fragrance oil, we have our color. Okay, I'm gonna give this a quick mix. The stick blender. Well, that kind of morphed into a bit of a green, didn't it? Let's add another scoop. Another scoop of the mica. There's my spoon. Oh, I guess I'll have to use this. Directly dry into the batter. Maybe I just didn't use enough. And although I did just spill some, so. Ah, messy, messy. I can't claim the title as a messy soaper because there's already an awesome lady on YouTube. Her name is Kenny. She has a, a channel, a YouTube channel called um, uh, Royal Appleberry. And I enjoy watching her channel and she has declared herself Kenny the Messy Soaper. <laughs> She's pretty cool though. If you get a chance, go check her out. Okay, so let's mix this in and see how much bluer we got this. Mail. Oh, it's getting there. Thankfully, this is a well behaving fragrance oil. All right, so I'm just going to plop this over here sure that this is all stirred in really well. Okay. How's the brown layer doing? Oh, the brown layer is just fine. All right, so I'm gonna take just a bit of the blue, well, <laughs> a bit of the mermaid. Okay, and a plop of the white. Okay. I know I just stuck a blue spatula into the white pitcher, but okay. And then I'm just gonna go around once. We bring the mold over. Okay. And I just wanna start out by putting just a layer of this in here. Okay, just down on the bottom. And can you see how that swirled like that? That's my goal. 
Okay, so I'm gonna set the spoon off to the side. I'm gonna do it again. A layer, a ploop of the blue, a ploop of the mermaid color, and then a big old ploop of the white. All right. And then take my spoon, go around once, and then pour this on top of that. Okay, and guess what? We're gonna do it again. Give this a shimmy shimmy shake. All right, I'm gonna add a lot of the blue lot of the mermaid color. All right. And a lot of the white. And I'm just plopping it right in. Okay. Take my spatula. Give it a swirl. Sorry, you couldn't see that. And then I'm just going to quickly pour on top of the other layer. Give it some dimension, give it some swirls. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Can you see that? All right. So I'm carefully going to scrape down the sides. <clears throat> All right. I'm not going to mix it. I'm going to take my spatula. I'm going to add in the rest of the Caribbean blue. Caribbean blue. Here's the mermaid blue. We're going to add in all of that. Just plop it in. Okay. And then scrape down my white. And just plop that in. Okay. All right. That's plopped in. I'm just going to give that a quick little stir just to start the swirl process and then I'm just going to dump it all on top. What I want this to do is look like rolling waves under the water. It's be rolling seas. I want it to be all churned and marbled and mottled and just a crazy mess of blue. All right. Give it a shimmy shake. Give it a shimmy shake that way. And then I'm gonna take my skewer and I'm just gonna make swirling all just, just in one direction without hitting the brown. Okay. Hopefully underneath there, it will look like Turning wave. Now I need a towel to clean off my skewer. Okay, and I'm gonna clean off my edges here. I'm just kind of even it all out, make it all nice and neat so that when I add the next layer. It's a nice clean surface to start with. Okay, I think that's going okay. Now, let's check our frosting. Oh, the frosting is at the perfect consistency. I want it to be a little bit loose because I don't want peaks and waves. Um, I just want it to be foamy, if that makes any sense. So I'll grab my piping bag. Right. And I didn't grab 
grab a cup. Hang on. Lots of grab a cup. Okay. And I'm just going to fit this over the, the edge of the cup like this. This is a disposable frosting bag that you would use to bake with, to frost a cake with. Okay. I'm just going to put it all in here. Okay, so um, the shells that I collected, when I got them home, I washed them and I rinsed them very well. And then they've been soaking overnight in a 5%, sorry, a 10% bleach solution. And when I took them off of there, I, uh, Spritz them with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And then spritz them with some gold glitter. Okay. So, can you see how I've got, let me grab my skewer. I've got all this space from the bottom or from the top of the soap to the top of the mold. Um, this mold holds more than what my usual recipe calls for. So that's what I was talking about, having some space at the top so that when I do put my, my uh, soap frosting on the top, it won't spill over the sides and it won't end up looking like a model of a t-shirt <laughs> as has happened in the past. I want the sides to be nice and straight without losing any of the integrity of the, of the frosting. Okay, so... This is still a little runny, but that's okay because I just want it to be just a little, just a little of a, a loop-de-loop. All right, so let's snip the top here. Don't want it to be very big. Let's put this where you can hopefully see. And I'll just take my frosting and I'm just going to make circular waves and you know what I'm doing this backwards and it's awkward so I got to turn it back this way all right and I'm just going to put some loopy waves on there and hopefully eventually you can see this I'm not looking for any particular shape I'm not going for any particular uh, peak I just want this to be like a frothy wave on top. So I'm just doing loop-de-loops in no particular size, no particular fashion. Oh, this is a very small bag from what I've become accustomed to at work. Okay. I mostly just want it to be, um, just fill the top Make it look all frothy. Okay, I'm getting a little too flat though. All right, maybe if I, maybe if I go this way now. Oh, that's working. All right, I think I saved just exactly enough. I am gonna fill in these little corners here or edges that I didn't catch. Okay. So let's scrape this down, get it down here to the bottom. Use it all up. Okay. Just with this little bit come in here and just reach the edges so that everybody has a touch of frosting on top. Little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. <laughs> All right. Okay, now I'm gonna pound it down. 
Okay. Still gonna clean up the edges. I just wanted it to look like it had some movement to it. Instead of just being a flat, flat white layer. Okay. And the edge here. And the edge there. Okay. All right. We've got that. So now what I want to do is I want to take where's my baby spoon go? I put it in the sink already. Hang on, go grab another one. Luckily, I've got a couple dozen of these. <laughs> okay, so I want to give this just like um, an edge like that. See that? Where it's standing up a little bit. To make it look like a wave curling over. Let's do that a little bigger. There we go. I still want all of these ridges and ripples and waves on this side. I just want it to look like a wave curling over. Okay. And now I'm going to spritz this top, which is, this is a new bottle for me, but it's just 91% rubbing alcohol. It's isopropyl alcohol. Okay, and I'm gonna pull to me my toppers. So, like I said, these shells I picked up from the beach. I've given them a, um, they've been washed, they've been rinsed, they sat overnight in a 10% bleach solution, they've been sanitized, they were sprayed with isopropyl alcohol, then they were spritzed with some gold glitter, and then sprayed again. All right, so I need my ruler which of course I didn't get out. It's right here though. I got it handy. I wanna space these evenly. So I'm just gonna lay the ruler down right here on this edge because I wanna put the shells on that edge. Okay. So we'll line that up there. Okay. Some are just going to get one shell on top, and sorry, I've got to turn this towards me so that I get these placed correctly. Some are just gonna have one shell on top. Some will have two. Let's see, so like this one. It's, it's a long, oblong one, so we're gonna put two on that one. So please remember to take the shells off the soap before you start using them. All right, here's a rather large one. I think I'm gonna put that one in at a bit of an angle. Okay. Same with this one. Well, I think I'm gonna put this one down here some more. I think I'll put like a little, little one up on top. There we go. Okay. Next, ooh, here's a pretty one. Who stripes on that one? Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Got some beautiful stripes on it. Not that one's just gonna get that one. Okay, uh, let's put some little little ones on this one. We'll start with one here. Okay, oh, that's getting really close to the line, but that's okay. One here, and this tiny one right here on the top. All right, here's a bigger one. Let's put a little one. I love the gold glitter on here. It's 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 actually not even gold glitter. It's gold mica. <clears throat> it just gives just that added little dimension, where not only do the shells glow with that gold, but um, just seems to bring out the colors. Let's put a teeny tiny one right 
No, not enough room for that teeny tiny one. Okay. Put this one down here. Let's put the teeny tiny one on this one. And make it prominent right there on top. Oh, this one's my favorite one of all. Look at that. Love that one. I was going to keep it. <laughs> I'll put it on the soap. That one's going to get its own soap all by itself. Okay, and then the last one, I'm going to put two on there. Let's put this pretty one on there. Okay, so, oh, you know what? I think this one over here could use another one. And I think this one here could use another one. And I think that's about it. So I'm gonna give this just a, another spritz with alcohol. Okay, and then another some spritz with the gold mica, just to make it a little magical. And there we go. We have our Beach Days soap. All right. You don't want to tip it too, too much. Okay. With the shells made, um, from Sunset State Park on the beach there and with um, um, water from the Pacific Ocean in the Lice Ocean. Okay, so now I have a mess to clean. <laughs> That's all right. I get for that. All right. So let's see, what's in my shower? What's in my shower this week is Sweet Honey Soap. Love that Sweet Honey fragrance. Wow, is it amazing. Um, so yeah, I have Sweet Honey Soap and then of course my herbal shampoo bar. So that's in my shower there. I'm still working on my Ylang Ylang, Sweet Ylang Ylang um, uh, solid body lotion. And I think that's about it for that. Um, I'm still burning the Neg Chompa candle that I, that I was burning last week. So far, I've got um, 18 hours and it's only about halfway gone. So about 18 hours out of that one. Um, Blackberry Blossom soap will be ready in another week or so. Let me tip you up so that I can see your face. Okay, so you can see my face. So yeah, Blackberry Blossom will be ready in another week or so, um, and then that'll be up on the website. And there will not be a Soapy Saturday video next week. The reason for that is that we aren't going to be here. Um, next week is the California Bluegrass Association Father's Day Festival. It actually, I do believe there are people who are already there um, getting things set up. They're the work crew getting things set up there. Um, I'll be going later on this week and TJ will be joining me on the weekend. It is my birthday weekend, so uh, that's how I'll be spending my birthday. And um, it's a lot of fun. I really love the Father's Day Festival. My birthday isn't actually until next week, but this is a close part, a close second. Uh, let's see, who else's birthday is this week? My stepfather, Pat, and he has a birthday this week. Uh, my friend, Mad Dog, he has a birthday this week. My friend Linda, she has a birthday this week. Um, my nephew Ryan on the 15th. Um, and that's it off the top of my head. Oh, and Shelly, but that's next week. But since I won't be here on Saturday, Shelly is my birthday twin. Uh, we have the same birthday. So happy birthday next week, Shelly. Um, catch us tonight, as usual, on a Saturday night at the El Jardine, El Jardine restaurant at 157 South Sierra Street in Oakdale. Uh, TJ and I will be playing there tonight, and we'll be there from 6 until 8. Uh, we will not be there next week for the same reason that we won't have a Soapy Saturday video. So next weekend is Father's Day, so for all you dads out there, moms who are dads, dads who play both roles, uh, dads who stepped in, dads who stepped up, and dads who have just always been there. Happy Father's Day. All right, I will talk to you later. See you in a couple weeks. Bye.